everybody, welcome to The Long Shot. I am one of your hosts, my name is Sean Conroy. And today, I am your only host. Amber Kenny is on assignment in Kauai, where apparently it is beautiful out and she is enjoying herself. I only know that because I got a postcard from her that was from Steubenville, Ohio, which I still don't understand the connection between those two places. Uh, But since I'm here by myself, I thought today I would go through some of the recent comments we've gotten on our YouTube uh, videos. This show is posted as a video every week on YouTube, a video platform. Uh, sort of like Twitter, but for video and not for hate speech. Although I guess I guess YouTube, there's plenty of that as well. But uh, we have been asking people to comment on our videos, and people have been very generous with that. And I feel like there's some stuff there that is fun to me recount, or for me anyway. I don't know about you, but I enjoy it. I enjoy hearing where people uh, are at with the show and what they, you know, Anyway, I thought today, and by the way, if you want to watch our show on videotape, it is at, the the channel is called Sean Conroy Gets Happier, based on a podcast I had when the long shot fell apart and everybody quit and there was nobody around, and then I started my own thing because I just wanted to do something. But anyway, uh, Sean Conroy Gets Happier is the YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash Sean Conroy Gets Happier, I'm assuming is the is the URL, although I have no idea, honestly. And I thought I would read some of the comments today. So uh, here we go. Albert, this is from a while ago, and you'll understand what I'm saying when I read it to you. Uh, Albert said, just so you know, while I don't have the time to hate watch a television program, I am fully invested in listening to you and Amber talk shit about La Brea every week. We did go through a period where we were trying to recap La Brea on a regular basis. And I think both Amber and I came to the realization that all of us just go around this life once. And there's not enough time to spend a lot of time wasting on stuff that is not worthwhile just for the goof. Uh, so we kind of both stopped watching La Brea because it was a little bit tortuous, torturous, tort, tort related. And um, we stopped recapping it. Although I will say I have seen a couple people talking about it on Facebook. Uh, my friend Tara was <laughs> who, I'd, who I had said we would have on as a guest at the end of the season. But then, of course, we both Amber and I quit watching it. So we never had the the season finale episode. Uh Or maybe it was season two. I can't remember. I don't know what's going on. Um, But she was writing on Facebook that she wants me me and her to do a podcast. Her and me, us, to do a podcast about it. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, uh Uh-oh. That's not good. Let's take a quick break and we will be right back. back you are listening to the long shot it is a podcast uh we often take breaks 40 or 50 seconds into the episode in this particular case it was because i did not turn my phone off and i could not immediately find it and i panicked i should not have stopped the recording that was gabby giffords calling to ask me for money and also just to check in see how i was doing um okay here is the next uh, uh comment from a listener, this is from Jamie, the official Long Shot Podcast historian. Amber and I had talked about the cucumber episode, uh, and and Jamie writes in, as per your curiosity, about nine minutes into the episode, the cucumber episode involved Amber telling a story about doing an audition monologue that ends with her character taking a bite out of a cucumber, and whoever was running the audition cut her off before she ever got to the cucumber bite. Auditioning is rough, folks. I know we all know that, but it's always worth repeating. Do not allow your children to grow up 
to be actors. Cowboys is bad enough. Actors is worse. Especially, don't even get me started on commercial actors, which is selling your soul for a few bucks and just horrific. That said, uh, I am looking for commercial work. So please, if anybody knows an agent who tries to get people commercial work, I would love to be put in touch with them. Uh, okay, here's the next comment. This is from our friend Frank out in Hawaii. And Frank says, just have to say, because I haven't seen anyone say this, I've been listening since the very first episode, the day it came out. The guest was the wonderful Jen Kirkman. The topic was shoes. And y'all did an improv song thingy about shoes during the break. Also, Jen was part of Checking In, which I think she did one time after, and only a handful of guests did. Don't remember who, but I bet Todd Glass was one. Uh, Frank, thank you for being old school OG. In from the jump. Uh, day one, the day it came out, that's amazing to me because what the fuck were you thinking frank uh maybe he was a fan of eddie's and that's why he was listening but other than that i don't or maybe he was a fan of the word long and he was like hey here's something about long um but yeah kirkman we would have do checking in todd glass was not in on checking in but i said to eddie before the show i was like i know it's going to be hard for todd to sit there the whole time and i bet he will jump in and that was exactly what happened is in the middle of the checking in of the Todd Glass episode he and I started yelling at each other across the room joking joking of course not actually screaming at each other I love Todd uh, or I did the last time I saw him which was probably 10 years ago but I'm a big fan still um okay here is one from and I only know this because I know what his YouTube handle and what his activities in life are. Uh, but this is from Scott, who is from, unfortunately, the land down under. Uh, and he loves Vegemite sandwiches. But he says, I'm writing this before listening to the end of the episode. I still listen. Maybe one day I'll watch. There is not, in my mind, there's no reason to watch. There's no visuals. It's just Amber and myself sitting there having a conversation. So if you like to go to coffee shops and watch people talk to each other, this is the perfect, these videos are the perfect thing for you. But if not, I think listening is fine. I find podcasts are a thing I do when I'm doing something else. Like if I'm out for a walk in the neighborhood, if I'm exercising, if I am on my way to somewhere by foot, by car, by train, that's when I listen to podcasts. But to sit and watch people on YouTube, and maybe people just put it on in the background, I don't know, but um, you mentioned having guests and you had some pretty high profile guests. I reckon if you do ever have guests again, it should be listeners like Frank and Heidi. Look, Scott, I appreciate you listening to the show. We will make the decisions about who gets to be booked when and where and on the show. It was great listening to Frank that time, sometime in the reason best. I agree. Frank was great. Not me, though. I just do spoons. Speaking of which, when Sean said his spoon fell, I thought he was going to say it broke, and I thought I'd have to send him another one, but it didn't break, and I was relieved. Uh, I now kind of wish I had said it broke so I could get another spoon, but maybe one of these days I will uh, commission Scott to do another spoon because his spoons are very cool. Uh, green apple cat carving on Instagram, I think, and in all the social media spaces. Um, I think Joe's broke. Oh, I think Joe's broke. His spoon broke. I'm not going to make him another one unless he comes back on the show, though, and I feel really powerful asserting this stance. <laughs> I think, yeah, good point. Uh, laughing emoji. Do emojis show up in YouTube comments? Probably, but I'm not going to risk it. They do. You can put emojis in YouTube comments. Uh, I'm not going to risk it. And I'm a little bit drunk. Cheers, low show powers, and cute heads everywhere. See, that's the way to listen to the show. A little bit drunk, not sure about emojis, and making uh, spoons. Everybody do that. 
Uh, okay, here is one from Giovanni, uh, and I hope I'm saying that right. Hope I'm not too late for Sean to see this ramble before next recording. Been a long time listener since the colored pencil days when you would make the guests wait and sit through Flam's stories, which Sean seemed to enjoy extracting from him, if only to rile up Eddie, Winky Face. Now, he didn't write Winky Face, but he also didn't use an emoji. It's an old school Winky Face with the semicolon and the the parentheses. I felt grateful when you guys came back from breaks and this current iteration of the show has fed my parasocial needs and kept me feeling like I'm somehow connected to strangers for whom I feel simpatico. Uh, simpatico is, uh, I feel sympathy with, I believe, or it's like a combination of a patio and a portico. Uh, I've always appreciated all your different senses and styles of humor. At risk of sounding like a sycophant, please sycophant away Giovanni at risk of sounding like a sycophant Sean's appearances on improv for humans in its early days were among my faves Mr. Pickles spoke to my twisted heart and I look forward to seeing the film when finished and and, and just to side note on the film it's not finished but it is getting there boy it is Making a film is difficult, and this film is literally going to be, and I love calling it a film, by the way. Thank you, Giovanni. Um, it's going to be, uh, I think, about eight and a half minutes long. So I can only imagine what it's like to make um, a nine-minute film. Okay. Amber Liquid Feet speaks to my soul as a dance school dropout who appreciates earnest self-expression <laughs> through movement. Sorry, let me read that again. Uh, Liquid Feet speaks to my soul as a dance school dropout who appreciates earnest self-expression through movement. Um, now, uh, Giovanni, understand that you may be a dance school dropout. That doesn't mean, you, you know, in today's world, you can just lie and say you graduated and got your degree. Recently saw Eddie when he came through Tampa doing stand-up. He didn't fail to make me bust a gut when Al and Margaret made an appearance. Um, I wonder if that was the Tampa Improv, which is a very cool uh, uh, club down there. When I met him after the show and mentioned I was a low show po listener, his expression got so sweet as he said he missed Sean and Amber. I like how... I like how Jamie doesn't get mentioned there. That's, yeah. I feel oddly proud of Jamie when I see posts about the Dynasty tip writer and what a great environment for both performers and audience he's created. And I hope brother Joey Wags is out there spreading the gospel of kindness to other souls in the wee hours of the night. I hope so too. I hope Joe is spreading that kindness gospel. Um, and I also feel pride. I mean, Dynasty Typewriter is a great place to perform. If you're listening, Jamie, I would love to come back. Uh, this next one is from, I'm going to try this and I could be totally wrong. It's from Zaman or Zaman or Zaman. Um, I'm guessing it's one of those, but again, I might be wrong. It says, hey, Sean and Amber, I love hearing you all catch up every week. I'll be listening as long as you keep putting them out. Sean, I wrote you a handwritten letter at your request, but not to me personally. Okay, let me unpack that a little bit. So I asked people to send in handwritten letters. This person did that. I asked everybody to do that. Not this person in particular, but I got a letter from them. Let's see if I handled it well. You not only wrote back to me, so far, so good. But you also sent me a disagree t-shirt. It fucking rules. And it's one of my most cherished tees, despite the occasional confused looks I get. Now, there's a couple of ways to interpret that. People could be looking at him or her confused because... They're like, disagree with what? Why are we disagreeing? We haven't even spoken yet. Or they could be looking at the shirt and going, why would you wear that man's face on your chest? Uh, listening to you read comments of longtime listeners made me want to add my comment this week. Look what happened. It worked out. I hardly ever listened to the show. 
Have no idea what the cucumber thing is, but I did know. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. This is a different. This is a different email, and I forgot to put the name in. Uh, so anyway, uh, sorry about the confused looks, Zaman uh, or Zaman. Um, this next one is from a college friend of mine, or maybe a college enemy, and he's the one who says. Listening to you read comments of longtime listeners made me want to add my comment this week. I hardly ever listen to the show. Thanks, Andy. I have no idea what the cucumber thing is, but I did know Sean before he was an international superstar. That feels like car- uh, sarcasm. Uh, if you send me your address, I will send you a T-shirt so you can wear my face on your chest and help me become an international superstar. Um, okay, here's one from Shelton. My tub faucet broke, but I was able to finger the spigot for showers. Um, By the way, there's a plane going by right now. I was able to finger the spigot for showers. I understand what that means. In other words, the, the head of the shower was not working properly, was gone, but you stick your finger in there and the water sprays around like it's a shower. Had it fixed, broke again that evening and could no longer trick the tub into giving me showers. Called a different maintenance person, he sawed off the faucet and replaced it. Took a long, dramatic 90s movie type shower. I don't know what movies you were watching in the 90s. I do not remember them being about people taking showers. Are you thinking of... Psycho from the 50s or maybe Porky's from the 80s was all about showering. Um, There's also an obvious joke here about, it's not a joke, about a Steven Spielberg movie about showers that I will not even get into. Uh, Took a long, dramatic 90s movie type shower, got dressed in my living room, had a quarter of an inch of water in it. First story unit, tile floors, not fancy tiles, limited damage. The repair person shows up with a shop vac for the water and asks me if someone took a shower and walked out without a towel. A literal puddle in the room, liquid feet. He finds the leak and says he needs to reseal it and to let it dry for eight hours. It worked, but water in walls seems like the birthplace of black mold. This all happened last week. It's like Sean's water heater issue. Quick fix for someone else to properly solve eventually. Been a fan for 11 years. When I was a letter carrier, I get flashbacks of moments of the show in certain areas like a true podcast nerd. Sean, you should get whatever Mike headset Amber has. She sounds crystal clear. Order it now. Get it in March. Open it in April. Am I losing my mind? I feel like I already... Uh, uh, read that one, but maybe not. Uh, doesn't mean I'm not losing my mind. Folks, I had a lot of other stuff I wanted to talk about today, but with Amber. I went to uh, an open mic last week and performed, and it was incredibly uncomfortable. More uncomfortable than I've felt at an open mic in a long time. And I wanted to talk with Amber about that, but I won't do that because she is not here. Maybe we can talk about that next week, unless lots of other things happen between now and then. I also wanted to talk about, I went up to Santa Clarita this week to do a stand-up show, which was very fun. But it was up in the air because there was such crazy weather forecast. And what ended up happening was... Myself and several other people who I know and like from the stand-up community were up in Santa Clarita doing stand-up. The next day, the route we took to get up there was completely flooded. The five freeway here in Los Angeles had, in some spots, within a few miles of my house, had four feet of water on it. It also snowed. There was snow on the Hollywood sign. It was a wild time. It has not snowed in... Hollywood. It has not snowed on the Hollywood sign uh, since the end of the movie Crash. So that was exciting. Um, But I'm not going to get into any of that stuff because Amber's not here and it's always easier to figure out why things are weird when Amber goes, what are you talking about? Or whatever. Um, Again, I'm enjoying getting these comments from people, people's origin stories as long shot podcast listeners, their 
difficulties and travails <laughs> in real life with various things that we all suffer from, like broken faucets. Um, I say travails and it makes me laugh because that's one of those words that Eddie always had trouble with. So when we were on the road back in the day, it would always be like, is it travails or is it travails or travails? Travails or travails? And I would always tell him the wrong thing, which would just make sure that he was just as confused the next time. It's, it's actually travails. Uh, so please, uh, you know, comment on our YouTube page if you are so inclined especially if you are a classmate of mine from college who wants to make sure I understand that you rarely listen to the podcast and somehow you accidentally uh, uh, heard an episode. Or, or even if you didn't go to college with me, but we went to high school together, I would love to hear that. Or before that, I went to uh, junior high school, so feel free to email me if you're... I was only there for one year, but you know, let us know if you went to junior high school with me. Or elementary school um so i would love to hear from you if you were if you attended daniel webster elementary school or even uh christ methodist nursery school just you know whatever we had in common back in the day i'd love to hear how much you don't enjoy the podcast um so please like and subscribe to the youtube channel and keep doing what you're doing, especially if it is making spoons and throwing another shrimp on the barbecue grill. See you next time on The Long Shot. It's a podcast full of travails. Thanks, everybody. Were the ready or not? The assortment of soon to be sunspots. The early underscore of my third favorite part of you. I guess you've undone me. I guess it's unfunny to say what you're doing, but not what you do. I'd like you to love me, but not from above me. From up in front, where the light. Is it?